Hello, Sagittarius, and welcome to your July reading with me, Elizabeth. I hope that you're all doing really well. This is going to be for Sag, Sun, Moon, and Rising for the month of July. As always, these are generals, so never give up your power to a reading or to a reader. Use your own highest intuition and guidance. Take what resonates and leave the rest. All of the decks are listed in the description box below, along with the best way to contact me if you'd like to inquire about a personal session with me. And also each month, I do the videos in the order of most liked. So please hit the like button. It tells me that you received the message and that there was something in it for you. So my beautiful Saggies, let's get into this. Also, if you're cross watching for Sagittarius, the messages may actually be for you. That's usually how it works. Um, for everyone, feel free to swap around the characters or the energies as you see fit. And a thank you to the, um, to the angels. Thank you, guides. Thank you, spirit. Highest and best messages for Sagittarius for July 2022. We're in cancer season as I'm filming this. So we're going to start with a Moonology Manifestations Oracle card, and then we will take it from there. All right. So what do we have for Sagittarius for the month of July? Okay, first quarter moon in Scorpio, release your blocks. Nice, Saggy. I feel like this is a month where I think you're really taking an honest look at things right now because the scorpionic energy is very transformative. If I'm not mistaken, in like your natal, uh, in your sun, sun chart, not your particular natal chart, you do have a lot of eighth house activity right now as a Sagittarius. So that is scorpionic energy, plutonian, death and rebirth. Um, and this is where you're able to like, it's real, really getting honest with yourself about seeing where you can um, overcome some of your obstacles towards like reaching your goals is what I'm seeing here. It's about reaching your goals. I love how she's in tree pose because it's showing where, you know, you're getting balanced, uh, getting aligned and like really connecting with your body. So there's something about your body here um, about like cal being calm so that you can look at things like, in a really authentic and honest way, that Scorpio, Scorpio energy goes deep. You could be dealing with a Scorpio or you have strong Scorpio placements in your chart. And uh, at the bottom of the deck is the full moon in Capricorn. Look at that. We have the full moon in Capricorn on July 13th. Take a reality check uh, with the mountain goat there. So this is in real time. And this is where, like I said, you're getting really honest with yourself about what's blocking you from reaching your goals. Um, what's blocking you from being happy, from being at peace, from being aligned. And it might not be anything that's so big. Um, and it may be much smaller things. I'm hearing like daily habits and things like that. Um, Scorpio energy is about shared resources. So this may also have to do with money, with resources, um, all of those things. And also we have a lot of Taurian energy that's happening right now. We've got the North Node in Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, and we have Mars that just moved into Taurus. So it's the opposite end of Scorpio. Like, uh, I think you're really taking a reality check with the Capricorn Earth energy of like what it is that you really value about the time and energy that you put into things and your own personal worth, like what that looks like. Um, the lover's card coming out. You see, I picked it up and it was flipped. So releasing blocks around relationships of all kinds, releasing blocks around um, your choices. So again, it's that reality check about choices. And um, this may be what you're seeing in your outside world, people that you love, people that are close to you, all of that. Like you're just really taking a close look at things like inside of some of your relationships. Are there relationships that you need to change the dynamics around because maybe they're creating blocks for you? Scorpio energy is, you know, it's water, it's very intuitive, it's deep in the feelings, like all of that. Um, yes, and you got the high priestess that flipped over, so we'll take her. So big energies, you're getting two major arcana, the lovers and the high priestess, intuition, and this is where, this is Piscean, so this is where you really um, you look within, you, you trust your own inner guidance. Uh, you're really connecting with something much deeper here this month in July. Um, it's where you're not seeking any external validation from any, anyone else, any authority outside of you. It's like you 
um, you really tune in is what I'm seeing. And there was one more that flipped over. Yeah, see, here's the obstacles and the challenges. So I feel like this is what you're looking to release and overcome, really overcoming some of your obstacles, overcoming some blockages this month, um, five of wands here. And you can see where he... Um, there's a dove there. Um, so that represents ascension and leveling up and peace and harmony and all of that. And, he, you know, he's figuring out, like, how am I going to get across this? And he will. And you will. Because I see that this is where the energy is really changing and shifting for you. Um, and it's all coming from within you. It's an it's really activating during this full moon in Capricorn. So it's like getting really like sort of down to earth, but it's also with the high priestess, it's like something higher, like the Akashic records. Um, there's this doorway that's opening for you, a gateway into yourself, but also into the universe. Bottom of the deck was another five. So that's um, emotional loss here. So we're seeing the five and the five. And I have to tell you, in your pre-shuffle, I kept seeing the Wheel of Fortune in the other tarot deck that we're going to use. Five and five is 10. And that's the Wheel of Fortune. So I feel like you are going through some changes. And, uh, and these changes are catalysts for your growth. Um, the wheel is going to start turning for you where you're going to see a shift in the energy. So this may be about a particular relationship or it, it, it's really more about aligning yourself more fully to your purpose. And that's where you sort of are able to uh, shift the energy for yourself a little bit. So let's get some more tarot for you, my beautiful Saggies. When I open up the deck, I see your energy, King of Wands with the Eight of Cups. Yeah, so um, that is sort of like releasing some of the blockages and moving on from something. Very, very scorpionic. So there's a lot of transformation and change um, for Sagittarius right now. And I feel that a lot of it may have to may be emotional. It's matters of the heart for many of you. But with the lovers, that's also Mercury. So it also has to do, or Gemini. So it has to also do with like the mind and the heart um, where they come together and they're balanced and they're aligned. So let's see what we have for Sagittarius. When we finish the reading uh, at the end, I'm gonna pull you angel cards and we'll do one for Sagittarius sun, one for Sagittarius moon, and one for Sagittarius rising. So I really feel like you know what's up though. That's the thing. You already know what these things are. If it's a situation that's been blocking you, something within yourself, a fear or a doubt, um, if it's been a relationship, a specific job, like you already know what these things are because you have the high priestess. Knight of Swords, uh, this is beautiful. So this is fast moving energy and this is, has something to do with your truth. Um, here it says, uh, right is worth the cost. Something right, being right, is worth the cost. Interesting. Um, I love this. This is your opposite side of Ge sign of Gemini that's coming out there. And let's see, Three of Cups. I love these hula hoopers. That is so fun. Look at how fun this energy is. So this may be around some of your connections, your networks, um, Gemini is the third house and we're getting the three of cups there. So networking, friend groups, a lot of messages this month, a lot of people this month. I feel that there's going to be a lot of communication this month. Um, and the high priestess can be rather silent or passive. Um, she doesn't necessarily share everything that she knows with everybody all the time in any given moment. So because she's listening. So that's also important for you. And the Queen of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, specifically Taurian energy here. And we'll talk about some of the astrology that's happening as well, because this is really aligned and lining up with the astrology that we're currently in. And we get the three of wands. So another three, you're getting three and three. This is beautiful. And the nine of pentacles, beautiful. So for many of you, this is around matters of, with the queen of pentacles coming out, this Taurus energy, like 
Um, Sagittarius, I feel that you are in a place and a time of expansion and growth. Queen of Pentacles, Three of Cups, and Three of Wands. So we have these three energies here. Uh, so this is a time of growth and manifestation for you, first and foremost. Uh, a time for you to grow your networks, grow your friendships. Um, Three of Wands is about commerce and trade. And because you can see the city there, I love how long her braids are because it's showing where she has, um, like she has deep connections to the place that she's in, um, the community that she's a part of, the businesses that she's a part of, the family that she loves, the friendships that she loves. She's really braided together with that. Like she's really connecting um, with these things. And I feel that you're in a place now where you're really starting to understand what your worth is, what your value is. It is this Taurian energy um, that we're really, we're moving through a lot of Taurus energy right now. And it, um, the North Node, Uranus and Taurus, and Mars just moved into Taurus. So I think for a lot of Sagittarians, you're going to have a sort of like, kind of like a new truth. Um, that's the Knight of Swords around uh, what's worth your time, what makes your time so valuable. Uh, you may be asked to, you know, spend time with friends. There's a lot of celebrating and parties and events, lots of events that you may be invited to um, for whether it's fun or networking for business or a combination of both. I think you're gonna be receiving a lot of invitations. There's definitely like, that's on the table for you. For some of you, there might be like some short distance travel that's happening in the month of July, little getaways, opportunities to take off for the weekend or work trips, trips with friends, whatever that, that is for you. So um, maybe, I don't know, I'm feeling like, um, you you have like there is this energy of stability and building wealth inside of the material world that's the queen of pentacles with the nine of pentacles like really really being in your sovereignty again this is like really knowing your value knowing your worth i'm seeing your money looking really good i think sagittarius has been really focused on money focused on um, you know, and it doesn't have to just be money, 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 but your stability, your growth, your independence, um, taking care of your body. I think that that's going to be something that's important for you this month, you know, is feeding yourself well, eating right, getting your exercise. You may want to spend more time at home, like in between some of these trips or little getaways, um, your home is like where your heart is. It's where some of you really where you're manifesting from. You know, you may be working from home um, or you're wanting to be at home, be in your garden, be outside in nature. Uh, it's something that I think that your creative energy, your creative opportunity, um, it starts from within you. Like this is very down to earth here. So there's like, you know, very practical matters. You're tending to very practical things in your life, you know, getting the, the things done in the home, um, you know, just like doing the things, cleaning around the house, organizing, um, you know, one kind of one thing at a time. It's a fertile time for Sagittarius. That's what I'm seeing. The threes uh, go back to the Empress. So this really is about manifesting. Um, your victory is coming. Like there's something that you're bringing in. You've been working on it. It's um, something that you're very passionate about. These are things that you feel very passionate about desires and aspirations that you have and you've already made the decision so you've laid down some of the plans for that and this month I feel that you're sort of like okay I can feel it coming and it is coming for you so that's really beautiful um blockages because I'm just going back to that first quarter moon in Scorpio it's like we have the Taurus and the Scorpio axis so this is Taurus and this is Scorpio, this is the north node of the moon, this is the south node of the moon. So some of this is releasing karmic ties, denser energies, like whatever that is, um, your abundance, you're growing towards the north node and that's Taurus, so that's about your worth. And the things that you value, the planet Mars is moving through Taurus right now, so you're really, you can really ask yourself this month, what do I really, really value? And also, as I'm filming this, we have uh, Mercury. So um, Mercury is moving through Cancer. So it, it does come back to the heart space as well, where you feel happy, 
where you feel supported, sun in cancer, where things feel happy for you, where you feel nurtured, where you feel safe. It is definitely, there's definitely something calling on you to um, express yourself, whether you're writing um, or speaking, engaging with other people. I'm feeling like there's lots of communication. I'm feeling like there's lots of invitations. I'm feeling like people are really attracted to you, Sagittarius. You're attractive. You're attracting a lot of people. Um, and you may have romance on the table for you. There may be a specific relationship that you're trying to, you know, release some blocks around. Um, and maybe uh, for some of you, if this is about a relationship, you may be in a long distance relationship. You, they're the sort of Gemini energy and you would be this queen of pentacles here you know, where you have to travel to see each other. And it's like, there is this person, but they're at a distance and you're really just focusing on yourself. And you may feel like there are some blockages within that relationship. Bottom of the deck is the King of Wands. Now in this deck, there are two Kings uh, for each suit. So there's a feminine King and a masculine King. They're still the Queens. Um, you're getting the feminine King of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Um, and here's that five of wands that we saw in the other deck. So this is great. I mean, this is where I feel like Sagittarius, you're in your own lane right now. You're being called to, um, like you are your only competition right now. Uh, you're really in your sovereignty this month, um, about what your value is, what your worth is. Um, you know, it's that Venusian kind of Taurian energy. Uh, you're really in your sovereignty here. You're in a power place. You're in a power position, right? And I feel that anything that is sort of anything that you feel is a blockage, it's actually easier for you to overcome than you think. Um, with the fives that we saw in the other deck, it's interesting because it's like, uh, this is just like child's play here. This is child's play. This is like the least serious of all of the fives. Um, so you know how to play the game. Like you're really good at the game of life. I think it's really about trusting what you know. If you're making like big moves this month, if there are actually like important things that Sagittarius is dealing with this month, I think that this is where, uh, some of, uh, your best kind of, this is like your winning combo here with the queen of pentacles as well. King of wands, uh, with the high priestess. So, having confidence in yourself, like this King of Wands is a leader, um, is a boss, is inspired, creative, dynamic, uh, not afraid to shine, not afraid to, you know, speak the truth, um, share passions, get out there and do the things. And it's coming from this place of like, just this uh, great discernment that you have and a connection to all that is and all that ever will be and all that ever was. This is your connection to like these cosmic energies here, especially as we start getting into August and Lionsgate and Leo season and all of that. Like this is, you know, the door into that gateway. So I feel like this is uh, your winning combo here. And if there's something um, that you in your life are looking to achieve, you're looking to get higher accolades inside of your work or um, what, what it is that you're known for, or these are family dynamics. This can represent siblings or whatever it is. Um, I feel like maybe that's where some of the blockages are coming in. It could be the ideas of other people, um, you know, other people's opinions, beliefs, ideas, all of that. And it's where like, you are totally in your power here. So you don't even have to be bothered with this only if you want to, if you want to play a little sports game of competition and leveling up and all of that, just know that you've got it and don't take it all so seriously is something that I'm seeing. Um, so for many Sagittarians, like there is a goal, there is an aspiration, there is something that you really want to have success around. And ultimately it's really there, you know, uh, for your sovereignty, for your independence and stability and your wealth. However, that being said, the nine of pentacles, you know, we can go further than that into the 10. 
So don't let this be your gilded cage. Meaning if you feel like maybe you're already here and you're like, yeah, I'm comfortable. Like well, I don't need that much anyway. And I'm not an overly ambitious person. In fact, I don't really like the competition. I don't like this immature energy. I don't need to compete with other people. I stay in my own lane. I drink my water and I, and I mind my business. Then this is the message for you. Perhaps, um, there's something that you can experience outside of what you've been doing. You've been doing great. You're coming up as a queen, right? Right in the center there. It seems like you have a great network of people um, and you've got aspirations and like all of that. However, um, and like, and that being said, uh, we also have Venus, the, the planet Venus that's moving through Gemini. And this is where we can challenge ourselves to expand our thinking, um, to think bigger, to, um, to go beyond, to experience new things, to expand. So I feel like for some of you, that's a message uh, where this month you may be releasing blockages around uh, how much further can I go? Like... What can I experience outside of this realm that I'm already in? Because actually things are going pretty well for me and I feel really comfortable and provided for and I'm working hard. Um, but there's something more that you're desiring. There's just something. It may be connected into like your soul path inside of the Akashic Records, like with that high priestess there. For some of you, maybe you're just working on some of your relationships with the lovers there. So let's pull you some more cards and see where we go with this because we did have the Five of Cups at the bottom of the deck. So, you know, releasing past disappointments and where you have been let down and where in your life you have felt disappointed inside of relationships of all kinds. Uh, so that may resonate for some of you wanting harmony inside of your life, uh, inside of your relationships, wanting peace and harmony and love and union, you know? Okay, so let's get you a few more cards. The universe, I forget which sign got this. Um, anyway, yeah, this is beautiful, Sagittarius. Let's see what else we have with that. And the seven of cups, choose wisely. Bottom of the deck, there's that. Okay, so this is a big energy for you. This obstacles and challenges, this game of chess, this wanting to improve yourself, wanting to level up and or it's other people, it's outside influences, but it's like an as within, so without. Um, again, it's, it's an energy of change. And when you add these two together, we get the wheel of fortune. Um, but here it's like sort of bigger than the wheel of fortune. Uh, it's the universe. So it's the completion of a big cycle that's coming up for you. I feel that you're really, you've traversed the whole world, the whole universe, and now you get to choose where you're going. And there's all these sort of choices here, opportunities, directions, that he can go in um there's you know so it's like which one which dream is worth pursuing this could be uh this is neptune that's in pisces and where you know we have to have a certain level of wisdom in order to choose wisely right don't we we have to have a certain uh experience under our belts we've we have to have learned a lot of hard lessons we have to have experienced grief and loss, um, obstacles and challenges in order to have that discernment, that discernment that the high priestess has to choose wisely. So I'm feeling like Sagittarius has some options uh, this month. Sagittarius definitely has options this month. This is a card of Saturn. Um, so, you know, it's connected into the Capricorn full moon. So I feel like that's part of the reason why this is coming out because it is part of the Capricorn full moon on the 13th coming up soon. Take a reality check. 
So for some of you, this is sort of a reality check around maybe there are dreams that you thought you wanted to pursue or you did pursue them, you tried and they weren't working out the right way. And the obstacles, I'm thinking of Ganesh, you know, Lord Ganesh, um, where we ask Ganesh to remove the obstacles and he will do that for us when it's aligned with our highest path. However, sometimes Ganesh will put the obstacles in, in our way because the thing wasn't meant for us. So I feel like this is where Sagittarius is taking a reality check on which is the one, which ones are viable, which ones are aligned with this version of you that is the universe, right? That is the universe. I mean, it's beautiful. Like, look at that. You know, it's so high level. Uh, two very high level divine feminines. Queen of Pentacles, Divine Feminine, even that King of Wands, it was the feminine king, not the masculine king from this deck. So, you know, this is really important for you right now, choosing wisely, um, because you, you have to trust yourself, Sagittarius, and maybe that's been part of the blockage, is that you know that this one wasn't the right one, but maybe you were like stubborn because this can be stubborn and chose it anyway because you you wanted to learn something, you know? Um, yeah, and I, I'm feeling like Sagittarius has movement, opportunities for travel, opportunities to expand your world. This is huge expansion energy. This is victory. So I feel for, for some of you, yes, it's around love and partnerships and relationships. And for others of you, it's, you know, it's, it's your dreams. It's your, it's your um, aspirations and your dreams and your hopes and your wishes. It's your healing, you know, um, it, for some of you, it's your healing. Maybe everything else is going well uh, for you and you've got great relationships and networks. Maybe you even have a great partner in your life and you have that harmony inside of um, your partnership and maybe it's really more internal for you. So it's going to resonate differently for all of you. But either way, I feel like Sagittarius is landed. Like you're down to earth this month. You're super, super down to earth this month. Even though your first card out was the Knight of Swords, because this is where your universe wants you to still express and feel light on your feet. Like you're grounded and anchored with all the pentacles energy and this Capricorn full moon and, you know, and the, the water energy of Scorpio and Pisces, but it's still where you can feel lightness of spirit. And I think the guides really want you to know that you may be dealing with a Gemini, uh, with a Capricorn, a Scorpio, a Taurus, or a Pisces. So let's get you some more tarot from the same deck. And we'll put these fives over there. Oh, and I want to show you uh, what landed. Um, oh, I think it was the obstacles and challenges. And underneath that was the chariot with victory. Okay. So, and then underneath the chariot was one of your cards, uh, the eight of wands, positive forward movement. So I feel like that's the goal here is positive forward movement and overcoming these obstacles and these challenges, uh, which they're not big ones. It's just the five of wands. Like those aren't huge obstacles. It can be totally internal. It's just like you're, you're battling with something with yourself um, or it's other people or it's feeling like you're comparing yourself to other people or, or other people, because this is the other thing with the five of wands, is that other people could be feeling some jealousy or some envy around you. Um, and so, and you may be seeing that inside of some of your circles or with a specific person, um, you know, and that's sort of what you've been like, I don't want to say manifesting, but you know, there's something about your energy that may be triggering to some people right now. And how can you overcome that? How can you deal with it? How can you be in your power? Even if you have people who are sort of maybe aggressively, you know, um, projecting their shadow onto you. That's something that I'm seeing for Sagittarius. So, all right, let's get you a few more tarot cards. Um, wow, interesting. So the Nine of Cups and the Justice card wanted to come out. So we will look at those. Emotional contentment and fulfillment and wishes coming true, making your own wishes come true. 
with the energy of justice. So, you know, this is where um, there is something balancing out this month for you. I feel like you are coming into a place of greater balance this month. If you're waiting on like any contractual agreements or things like that, anything that you've been waiting to hear back around, Knight of Swords, Justice with the Nine of Cups and the Three of Cups, it's super positive. This is where like you definitely have um, justice coming your way. Um, you know, if you're waiting on a job offer or if you're waiting for anything legal to wrap up, I feel that you're gonna have a lot of resolution around that this month, things come into balance. It's fair for everyone and the outcome may Makes you really happy. Ace of Pentacles, beautiful, beautiful Sagittarius. Queen of Pentacles with the Ace of Pentacles. And like I was talking about with the nine, if you add the nine and the ace, you get the 10. And this again, you know, for some of you, maybe you're in a place where you just want to be safe. That's cancer season. You just want to feel like away from the drama. This is drama. You want to be away from other people's stuff and drama and all of that. Um, but for some of you, this can become a gilded cage. Like I said, there's opportunity for more. And it's like, uh, life will grow. Like, look at that. Life will grow. And I think those are called fiddleheads, if I'm not mistaken. I feel like they're a nod to the fiddleheads. Um, but it grows through this giant rock. And there's two of them there. So that's kind of interesting. Coming out under the Queen of Pentacles, um, it's like, you know, where's your counterpart? Like, where is the counterpart? So this may be an opportunity to bring in a new business partner, a new creative partner, a new friend, a new lover. Um, it's opportunity. It's a potent time for you because the ace is there for you with the knight of pentacles, Virgo, beautiful. So I feel like you're going to be, you know, moving along steadily. Um, the knights are coming in for you too. There may be somebody that you're working with, you're planning with. Um, I, I think it's also where you're not just going to sit still and wait all month. Uh, you're actually going to take action. You're going to it reminds me almost, I don't know why, of the serenity prayer, like God grant me the strength to, you know that prayer, but it's basically like only doing the things that you can control. The rest of it, you leave to the universe. The rest of it, you leave to God. You leave to the angels. Um, but you are actually like, you're taking action here. You're not just sitting um, as this giant rock formation or whatever. Um, you can actually take action. I see that things are moving along. Even if it feels like this may be a bit of, um, I don't know, it may feel like a slower month, even though we have the Knight of Swords there. I'm just feeling like things kind of move along slowly at a slower pace and that feels good. Just there's a slowdown that's happening here. Maybe it started off really quick the month because it's already, you know, the first end of the first week of July. I'm sorry I'm late with your reading. The month of July may have started off with a bang. It started off fast and now there's a slowdown. And I love that. Um, there's justice coming. There's a wish fulfillment that's coming. Something's making you very happy. New offers on the table. Even if it, um, even if this offer, like it's kind of there, the opportunity is there. You're, it's being offered to you, or you're feeling like the universe is bringing it to you, and you're going to take it slowly, and that's okay. And the Six of Pentacles, so more of the Virgo energy. I think this is beautiful. This um, is speaking to you know, the work that you put out, the energy that you put out, the love that you put out, all the things that you put out. These are my light worker cards for um, just me personally as a reader. It's service to others. That's Virgo, service oriented. You know, um, yes, it, it wants to do for itself, but it's really also focused on how it benefits other people. It's light work. And so it's also where the divine sees everything like that is you and your universe. It's watching. It sees everything. So this is the divine law of compensation. And what this means to me is that the universe sees everything that you're doing. Know that. So if you feel like, you know, in some portions of your life where like, where's, where's the equal giving and receiving? Where's the balance? Where's the justice? Like you give so much or you give in a specific way but you're not seeing the return. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> the universe sees. Your universe sees. And it will come back to you. 
in maybe in a different way, shape, or form. It comes back from a different person. It comes back, maybe for some of you, this is where you are really calling in these partnerships, these situations where there is more balance, there is more giving and receiving inside of romance, inside of family. Uh, it's where things are being rebalanced so that you have relationships that are more harmonious. And maybe that's been a block for you. And now you're seeing where, you know, you're choosing much more wisely. If there's somebody who just isn't in it, they're selfish and they don't give anything back, then you're like, finally done with that. That's part of the universe. It's, you know, maybe some of these uh, situations were more karmic in nature and you're releasing a lot of that. And maybe it's even those energies have created um, these obstacles in your life. It's just density. And again, it's like, this is not like I, this energy when the five of wands comes out, I'm like, yeah, whatever. It can be drama inducing or it can create some triggers. Like there are smaller triggers, um, but you got this. Look, he, he can get right over that. And the dove is even there saying like, go, it's okay. Just do it. So anyway, way um let's check the bottom of the deck uh the moon so again the moon coming out twice for you full moon in capricorn full moon in capricorn this is a big moon for sagittarius and i feel like you are facing some of your fears you're facing some of the realities of things like it's an acceptance of the way that things are. It's connected into uh, the Piscean energy of the high priestess. So this may be a month where you're really getting a lot of signs. Um, this is a month for you to feel, to feel, you know, to feel the feelings. How does the thing make you feel? And be guided by that when you're choosing wisely, but not from a place um where it feels heavy and dense, more from a place where it's like, this is what my heart wants, this is what I love. Um, I love how she's sort of like an octopus there, very mysterious, um, you know, and it's also, again, these could be some of the blockages, uh, tentacles of other energies. Um, even if these people or these situations are no longer in your life, where there's still an energetic tie, you could look at some of that. And there's the page of wands. Uh, so I love that because this is about your ever, um, you are the mystic optimistic. I say this to you a lot, Sagittarius, you'll always have that wonder and curiosity of a child um, and want to explore and want to grow and you know, nothing's going to put out your fire. That's also the toucan there. They have like their own internal furnace. So they regulate their own body temperature. They provide their own warmth and they can also cool and calm themselves down. Toucans are awesome. You've got like the macaw or the parrot there. Very uh, curious, very jungle-like, very jungle-like, very Amazonian. Super, super love that. And then look, there's the, the second queen of wands um, or the... Okay, we had the King of Wands, that was the feminine, and now here's the Queen of Wands uh, coming out. So this is beautiful. I mean, it, it's a really, really lovely energy, I have to say. Um, but again, that first card out of release your blocks, it really did set the tone for something. And, you know, maybe that part of it, you're like, I'm good, you know, I'm doing good. I've really worked through a lot of my quote unquote blockages or whatever. And like, like I was talking about Ganesh, you know, where there's been like something that, um, an, uh, uh, like some kind of a part of your life that it just won't budge, you know, um, sometimes those obstacles are put there in our path for a reason because that path was not right for us. So that's just for some of you. All right, my beautiful Sagittarians, let's get you a few messages. Um, this is a really cute deck. They're called the Empath Power Cards. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's move on. I, I want to get you some fractal cards, and then we'll do the Empath Power Cards, and then um, and then I'm going to do an Angel card. They're beautiful. Uh, one for Sag Sun, one for Sag Moon, and one for Sagittarius Rising. And also, um, with that first quarter moon in Scorpio card, um, these may be things that are going back to the eclipse in Scorpio that we had in May. Okay. All right. So you got a jumper here. Ooh, Saggy, sexuality. You know, and that is the lovers. Um, 
this is the lover's card. You know, the lovers is divine union in many cases, especially in this deck. It, it looks very divine, like they're divine counterparts. Uh, but in the traditional tarot, it's kind of Adam and Eve, you know, it has that vibe and it's more physical love. But um, I'm seeing the green and the green healing. So there's something about your sexual nature. Um, that's the queen of wands that we saw and the king of wands, um, you know, sensual, sexual. So that wants to be looked at. Maybe this is a month where you are releasing blocks around matters of intimacy, sexuality. Um, it may be with a partner, you know, where maybe one of you is more sexual, like very highly attuned sexually, uh, physically, and the other partner wants more, craves more like intimacy and gentleness. So it might be where these two, you're working on these two um, energies within your current relationship, or this is what you're attuning to, you know, is like higher level love um, transcending. It's almost Tantra, I want to say. Okay, so um, let's get you. There we go. Wow. So this deck is called Return of Spirit, and you are getting the Return of Spirit card. That's pretty amazing. So this is a big message, and we are going to read it. Okay, so it is a renewal of your heart, mind, and spirit. Your spiritual connection to source is stronger now than it ever has been. Know that, Sagittarius. So some of these more physical 3D relationships, they're just not doing it for you. I think for those of you where it's around love, um, you are choosing wisely now. Your relationships, all of them, uh, they have to be higher level because you, you've you really ascended here. You've really, really leveled up. Your time has come. It's now. Um, trust in your connection to source. Flow in it and shine in it. Um, your beautiful heart is open to both giving and receiving the messages from the heavens. That's the high priestess. Um, and so your time has come. This is a time of manifesting your highest will, Sagittarius. This is amazing. Um, you can experience true empowerment, wishes coming true, true greatness is who you really are and you're ready to express that fully. Um, you've done the work. Know that all is right in your world. You have done the work. That's the universe. You've learned the lessons that you've needed to learn. You did the work. Um, and maybe that's the reality check. Like, hello, <laughs> that's the reality check, you know, pretty interesting. Um, so uh, you've come a long way in your journey and know that and acknowledge that for just a moment, how far you've come. Hold your head high. Feel proud of who you are. Your guides and angels are certainly proud of you. So if you have been, that's why I was feeling like Sagittarius may be getting a little bit of side eye or shade from people because trust me, energy don't lie. People see this, people know this. Your energy does not lie. So trust that. Um, and it's interesting that the sexuality card came out. You'll have to let me know if that resonated, you know, for you and, and just kind of how that resonated for you. So maybe that's something that you're really kind of like focusing more on. You want more of that in your life. I'll try not to keep repeating that word or um, I might get flagged or whatever. So let's get you some empath power cards because clearly you are a highly empathic Sagittarius here. So these are super, super cute and we'll get some messages from your guides. So, um, okay. Yes, look at this. I am at home in my body. So that's the queen of pentacles, you know, and it's... Um, it's all, it's the um, sexuality card. It's all of it. So this is coming back to your body. Um, because the Queen of Pentacles and the Taurus energy is ruled by Venus, it's so sensual and it's about the body. So treat your body well. It's your temple. I will empower and not enable. Yeah. And that maybe that was, you know, look, you're a light worker here, right? You give, you're always giving to people. You want to do good in the world. So, um, so you're dealing with a lot of energies in your life, throughout your life, of people that need your guidance, they need your support, and there's a fine line between enabling someone or empowering them. So that's going to resonate differently for each of you. So you don't have to enable anybody. You can be empowered. You can still 
um, give them love in a specific way, but you are not here to enable people, Sagittarius. Um, you're too high level for that, okay? All right, so let's get you a few more. I am safe to take up space. Yes, you are. Take up as much space as you want. Make yourself big, bold. That way when your ships come in, they can see you because you take up the space because you're larger than life. And it's not from like the super egoic place. There's a humbleness about this because you've been you've you've been through the whole universe. So you've had a lot of hard earned lessons. You've been humbled, but you're still safe to take up space. Again, when those ships come in, they can see you. Okay. Because you take up the space and let's get you one more. Yes. My body is my sacred space. My body is sacred space. It's just your body is sacred. It's a sacred space. It's a temple. So uh, be at home there. Let that be your home. If you are traveling night of uh, swords, the universe. Um, I don't think there were any other cards of travel per se, but there were a lot of threes and the Gemini energy, you know, can be about traveling shorter trips. Um, you know, uh, that your body is your home. Um, I just, I love all of these messages and this is for you, Saji. I will not abandon myself. A men to that, or a woman to that, like, I will not abandon myself. That is beautiful. All right. So let's get uh, angel messages for the Sag Collective. We're going a bit long on this reading. So I'm going to do Sun, Moon, and Rising. Uh, I can't give credit to the author because I don't know who it is. None of these are signed. I found them without a box at Goodwill. So if anybody has ever seen these cards and you know who made this deck. I'm really in love with it. It has really powerful messages. So we'll do sun, moon, and then rising. Okay. Ooh, Sagittarius sun. I feel like Leo got this. No, okay. Sagittarius sun. There is a beautiful, strong energy and love in your relationship. However, if there is conflict, you could consider seeking external help now. Don't be too proud to fight for what you love. Sometimes you have to set the one you love free and yourself too in order to be able to see the big picture, that's Sagittarius, from a distance, that would be Gemini, and with fresh perspective, Venus and Gemini. You have a lot in common, but are individually very different. Talk about expectations and mutual frustrations, but with a newfound openness to each other's views. Come from a loving and authentic place in your expressions. That's the best you can do. Ask us for help to maintain positiveness and see the love in each other's hearts, even when disagreeing. So this could be a mother, a son, a father, a sibling, a best friend, a coworker, or uh, your divine counterpart, someone that you're dating or someone that you're in love with even. So um, that's your message for my Saggy sons, Sagittarius moon. Ooh, I love her. She's like red and green. She looks like a Christmas angel. Your passions drive you. Focus on what brings the best results. You have new life-giving energies and bring hope to those you share them with. Go to bed tonight with a quiet plea for clarity and vision. Wake up in the morning with pen and paper ready to write down your newly revealed passions and visions. You are powerful beyond your own comprehension. We follow you with great joy on your journey. Trust your intuition always. Beautiful Sagittarius moon. And for my Saggies rising. Yeah, she looks like she's rising. Take a deep breath, relax, and don't rush into fixing the immediate situation. Rethink the alternatives and consider the advantages for you and your decision. We are there to guide you if you still doubt your own intuition. Keep us in your heart and feel the angel's presence. We heal you. Um, so I feel like this is really connected into your choosing wisely. And don't overanalyze this. Like it's not just, it's not all about the mind right now. I know Venus is in Gemini, which is very, you know, um, analytical. 
But right now, um, um, Mercury, uh, Mercury is in Cancer. So that wants us to feel. We're not computers. So go into the heart, that Scorpio, Piscean, Cancerian energy. Go into your heart. Take a deep breath. Relax. You don't have to rush into making a decision right away. Um, and so rethink, but think with your heart and follow your intuition like the high priestess. So that was for Sagittarius rising. And let's get the bottom of the deck for all Saggies. I love her. She's so pretty. The longing you feel is perfectly normal. Try to feel the positive in the fact that so many and so much can evoke such emotions in you. That in itself is very beautiful. Let feelings of gratitude find a place in your heart for they serve your highest good. Now you can move on with love and a feeling of deep connection, even from afar. All right, Saggies, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your energy, for spending your time with me. It really is very humbling for me to have anybody watch these videos um, and listen to me for this long. So I love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful month of July. I will see you all soon. I promise your August readings won't be so late. And take really good care. I love you. Namaste.